Welcome to a pro-casted game of Age of Empires 4 featuring two of the best players out here on the ladder. We've got 3DB playing as the Malians up against Twitch chat expert, who's actually Beastie Cutie, rank 1, 2, 3, 10, whatever it is on ladder. He's one of the best, and you might particularly like this game because Beastie Cutie, he is an HRE expert. This is one of his best civilizations. And so seeing him play this up against Bees Malians, it's sure to be an epic showdown. Hope you guys are excited about Age of Empires 4. Hopefully we should be getting news about some new civilization soon. Now we don't actually have any confirmation that new civilizations are coming, but last year we got the Malians and the Ottomans announced about this time and then they were released in October around Red Bull Wolo. Now, I don't think Red Bull Wolo is going to be happening for Age of Empires 4 this year, but I, for one, am definitely looking forward to hopefully some new civilizations, maybe that announcement about the Xbox release of the game, anything else that might be coming down the pipeline. So give me your best bets. What, what civilizations do you think we might get? What might be announced soon for me? I would love to see the uh, the Japanese and the Byzantines. It seems to be two of the most popular ones I see all the time across the forums and in Twitch chats. So we'll see uh, if we're right with that. Let's see what how uh, they're opening. BC doing a pretty standard HRE opening. He's got his seven on food, three on gold. Prelate walking between the two, uh, giving a little bit of inspiration. And uh, here at home, B opening up with a barracks. He did build two houses. Uh, on top of his pit mine that's providing him some passive income. But this makes me think that maybe B's going for some kind of tower rush if he's making Donzo this early. Or perhaps he's just being wary that there isn't some kind of fetal age pressure coming from BC, but that's probably unlikely from the HRE. Adding another house there. Now it's interesting, he's using the straggler trees. Now they changed this a few months ago, but it used to be in the dark, I feel like it's really changed how Dark Age plays out. The the straggler trees are a lot closer, right? You got like these ones that are like really close to towns, and they used to spawn like out here and stuff. So I feel like when they moved these closer to the town center, it really brought a lot more potential if you wanted to try something different in the Dark Age. If you wanted to keep some villagers on wood without necessarily making a lumber camp right away and do some things like this, it's now a possibility. So it's interesting to see uh, B taking advantage of that. So we've got some Donzo coming out. I don't know if he'll follow this up with a tower. Probably not. Maybe just trying to harass some gold there. It's going to be a difficult. As you can see, the gold is spawned in the backside. The prelate can typically outheal any damage that might be done. So I'm kind of curious what damage he thinks he's going to do here. Perhaps he thought that uh, BC might open up out on the deer. Maybe could have been a, a thing. But either, either way, he's got a little bit of a uh, terror presence here already in about the three minute mark. Gets one shot off on this villager, but probably not going to be able to do a whole lot. Now, we do have the Aachen Chapel coming down for BCQ right now. So we'll get some inspiration here on the gold, the wood, the sheep here. He probably would like to push this these deer in. So this could, if he can contest this, contesting a food source can be a good way to, uh, you know, keep a turtley opponent kind of down, uh, starving for resources. But of course, he's got room for farms here between his town center and the Aachen Chapel. But uh, here we go. The super aggressive playstyle of 3DB is kind of to be expected. I would imagine VC might uh, have thought something like this might, might be coming this way. Okay, over the other side of the map. He does still have five on wood. Uh, the rest are going to be uh, on food and gold there. Well, the gold is uh, mostly just pit mines. Just this one person building, building the houses. But there we go. So BC's in the next stage. Uh, B might have a few Donzo, but really unable to do a whole lot of damage. And the Holy Roman Empire, they have emergency repairs. So he's going to be able to repair this mining camp. It's not going to go down. So that's a, a Civ bonus for them. So not going to get a whole lot of damage there. On the other side, we do have BC dropping down his first archery range to counter those Donzo. So we're going to see that coming out. He's got three already queued up. And he's going out here for the stone already. So... This kind of makes me think he's working towards a uh, a second town center already. So he's going to kind of turtle up, hopefully push these Donzo back, and then go a little greedy there with his economy. So the HRE, very good turtling civilization in general. Uh, and I think maybe that's why we see B kind of contesting these uh, these deer a little bit. But we'll see how this works out. <laughs> he decides to, to deal with those wolves as he... You can see each one of them has a little bit of damage. And that's from the wolves. They actually uh, had... had made their mark there 
Now his archers, uh, as they spawn, they're just going to be sitting there by the town center. Back at home, B's going to be aging up here soon. He's actually built a mill out on the berries because he... I, I, he must have ran out of sheep earlier, so he decided to come out here. Um, so it's interesting. He's already uh, training up some cattle. So I think he ran out of sheep there. Uh, it looks like he recently did drop some off, but he went out to the berries nonetheless. It'll be interesting to see if he goes for uh, what I like to call the Muvu, but of course building those cattle ranches uh, and then going up with the... With the uh, Going up with the... It's not the Fremba. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the other one right now. The Muvu. That's what I call it. <laughs> I can never remember. Oh, it's the Grand Fulani Corral. That's the name of it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, Mons Aquarius coming up. Ten of them on that. So that's going to be giving some passive gold and stone for B. And if you are watching this video still, hopefully you are. Uh, Hope you enjoy uh, these uploads and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I have not uploaded in about three weeks and I'll be honest, I think this might be the longest I've ever gone since Age of Empires 4 launched. And well, the reason really being that I've just been really busy uh, with life stuff. Um, my entire house had to get new siding and new roofing and had a deck project going on. So I've had like contractors at the house for like several weeks now. I've been managing that. Uh, I had to go out of town for uh, a family funeral, and then I also, I'm a jazz musician, so I play gigs on the weekends a lot of times, so summer's just been really busy for me, and on the side, I've actually been having a, quite a bit of fun playing Beyond All Reason, it's another RTS, uh, free to play, you can go download it, try it for free, um, but just something different I've been enjoying, as I've been kind of waiting for new content to come out for Age of Empires 4, uh, but... I saw this game happening on Twitch today. I was like, Psh, I never want to miss a, a B versus Beastie Cutie uh, showdown. So let's let's check it out. But so if you're if you're a returning viewer, don't worry, everything's fine. I've just I've just been busy, and I'm glad you're coming back to the channel. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little update on what's kind of been new with me. So I'm gonna have a super shiny new deck for my next uh, hot tub stream. You guys know I do a little uh, hot tub streaming out there. We did use our trackpad of heroes uh, account for. Uh, for playing the ladder with just a trackpad. We got the gold so far, so that's been fun. I think one of the funnest things I've had this summer is I went and visited some family, and I I, uh, I brought my gaming laptop and let my nephew play uh, Age of Empires 4 for the very first time. And he's, like, in, like, the fourth grade. And I'm like, that's the first time I played Age of Empires 2. I remember I'm, like, planting the seed of Age of Empires, and he was, he's all into it now. And so it was, that was super fun for me because I remember the first time I got to play Age of Empires 2 at a friend's house and how it really just got me addicted to RTSs. Okay, the boar is, uh... It seems to be getting into the battle here. I, that looked like B actually had aggro that one. It's kind of... Maybe he's just trying to get it away from his army so he can engage. A little back and forth. Uh, Beastie, of course, did drop a second town center as we expected. Built a little bit of a wall there. Maybe he's just trying to prevent that boar from getting underneath the town center. I think that might be what he's doing. I think he wants to try to try to keep that away from Beastie. But he did get access to all those deer. Um, so that's going to be good for him. You see him going for gold. And he did get the outpost upgrade here. He got his arrow slits. So, uh, yeah, he's... In pretty good shape, I would say. Uh, we do see B starting to build some cattle ranches, so maybe he'll move towards that Muvu. And we've got other pit mines coming out. So he's got a little bit of map control, but isn't able really to deal a whole lot of damage to uh, what Beastie's doing over there. By the way, guys, I did, uh, I, I added a cloud lifter to my microphone setup, so I got a little bit more gain. I tweaked some of my settings here in my GoXLR mini interface. So let me know what you think of the audio. Does it sound good? Uh, any, any critiques, I'm always open trying to give you the best audio quality possible. It's always good when you're casting and your voice is kind of your content, you know, to have it be as good as good as it can be. Okay, so it looks like BC is going to secure this wood line. This is not looking good uh, from, from a glance right now. A lot looking great for B. Uh, HRE, this is how they want to play the game. 2TC. He's got his deer secured. He's now got a boar secured. I mean, this is a good position for him to be in. And we do see B go, or BC going up with the, the Regent's Cathedral right now. So he'll be looking to grab up these relics for that passive gold income. So B did uh, invest in a little bit of an army here. Now he does have his own pit mines. And of course, going to have this going on. So 
you know, but look at the resource per minute. You can really see the, the amount of food that BC's bringing in right now. Not too far ahead, but it, uh, you know, as you start to move over the Castle Age, uh, I wonder how this is going to play out because I've seen Beastie turtle up in these situations into this super long game. Um, he's he's really good at doing doing it. And this is, like I said, his number one civilization. So this is going to be a hard one. Archers versus Donzo, of course, the archers win that, but he does have uh, five of these javelin flowers, throwers, which are one of the only units. It's a very unique unit in the game. Uh, it is a hard counter to archers. So it is a ranged unit that has a hard counter to archers, um, but you don't have too many of them because they'll do overkill. They'll actually do too much damage when they target one. So you just want like a few of those in your army. But we see BC Kitty reaches the castle age here, just underneath the 11 minute mark, and he is now throwing down a barracks. And you see B is, he's looking after that relic. I think he knows it's there. Yep, he knows it's there. So he's trying to maybe catch a prelate uh, walking out there towards a relic, but BC knows he's there because of this tower. Look at that. He can see exactly where that army is. He's getting some shots on it. Now this makes me a little bit worried. His army's kind of behind the base of BC Kitty, and this is kind of the point where you know, he can just maneuver away or trap his army. <laughs> Surprised to see him lose a villager there, but it looks like B is going to get a free pick on that one. And uh, has not repaired that wall. BC still continuing to eat the deer and the boar. Strail Bora. Looks like we're going to have a, a prelate going out front. Let's see if he's able to pick up a relic. B is going to be watching, though. There he is. So that relic's likely not coming home. That prelate's probably going to die. Um, did he ungarrison? He did uh, from the Aachen. Uh, he got back in there. Yeah, so now we're gonna. Have, it's like it's pretty much a big ring around the rosy with the relics. I'm gonna give you, uh, I guess, BC's line of sight so we can see if he gets any relics. So he d loses that prelate. He goes for the northern one. He's able to grab. He's got archers gonna be able to stop those javelin throwers probably from picking off his prelate, and he's probably gonna at least secure one of these relics. Um, but meanwhile, making a little bit of dive there in the wood line, picks up a few villagers. We can see several of them going down. You see the villager count. And that's nice for, for B to be able to do because, of course, BC's up on villagers since he went 2 TC while B went 1. We do have a man armed in here right now, but he's able to take that out just because he has such a big mass. And uh, he's just going to kind of sit there, it looks like, and keep BC off of the wood. But BC probably go to the north side is what we're going to see. Yep, there he goes. And he did get a relic inside that outpost. So that actually, for the for the HRE, that gives a lot of bonuses. Look at all those things that happens when you put a relic in a, in a tower for the HRE. It gets additional armor, damage, sight, range, weapon increased, uh, range increased. It's just really good. Wait, did you guys see that? It looked like a torch was being thrown up. I swear it was. Man, I would love to back that up, but we can't. Okay, so... Uh, Right now, we've got a stable being dropped down. We've got two stables, one barracks, and an archery range. And it looks like B's just kind of camping this wood line, but this isn't doing a ton of damage. It rerouted his troops up to here. But that's not going to be a super big issue since he, uh, since he's been able to move. Okay, so let's see if B's looking at the, the next age yet. Uh, looking at his, his macro, really no. He's uh, continuing to do his cow boom. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, man, you hate it when your villagers accidentally do this. <laughs> they ran out of, of cows, so they ran after this one and killed it right in the middle. So now this is going to be a little bit of awkward engagement there for him. Okay, is he going to... Let's see if he adds any Musafati into the mix. Uh, not seeing him. We got some sofa. Uh, well, I guess one... Was that one sofa? No, that's a scout. So no sofa. Okay, but uh, honestly, BC is not looking too concerned. He's just back there. Continuing gathering his resources. He's ahead on villagers. Uh, he was able to get one of those relics. So, you know, he, he's okay just to wait this out for now. He's kind of in avoiding these engagements. And these are running underneath town centers, underneath towers. He does pick up another villager, which is going to be nice. In come the knights to charge with the Donzo there to meet him. He moves back. Man, armor's microing to the front. Archer's continuing to try to pick off the spearmen. If he can pick off the spearmen, these knights can really do some nice damage. Goes in there again. It looks like he's going to stick the fight this time. Pull the Zonzo out. He's trying to pick off the spearmen with the uh, archers. And uh, with the help of the town center there, he's able to do quite a bit of damage. Yeah, he lost a few troops, but he's in his own base. He'll be able to replenish those forces. He just wants to kind of mop the rest of this up. And then he should have the tech superiority here. 
So I, I don't know. I'm kind of surprised to see B stick this out so long into the feudal age, especially with the fact that he wasn't able to deny these deer and wasn't able to deny the boar. We see another relic coming in now. He just loses a huge portion of his army. And this is going to be a very tough spot for B, in, B to be in at this point. Very nice micro there from Beastie using his archers to, to pick off the Donzo. And we do see the Grand Fulani Corral coming down to complete the Muvu experience here. This will be some nice passive food generation. Now, hold on. He canceled it for some reason. Oh, I think he's trying to get it right here. See, this is awkward. Like I mentioned, they killed the uh, cows on the walk. Because even look, like, look how much walking time does it do. This is, this is not what he wanted to do here. So this is kind of a slip up. This happens to me all the time, so it's good. This <laughs> makes me feel good seeing it happen to, to be. <laughs> He's a lot better than I am. Where were these guys going? It looked like maybe they were going to go for the deer or a, a boar or something, but I guess the deer, but they turned back around. Okay, so now BC, he just mopped up the army. He could push out, but he's saying, you know what? I'm probably ahead. I've got two TCs. He's picking up some relics. He's just going to chill in his base, make sure something wild, a raid doesn't come. Uh, to impact his troops. I'm surprised he's not going out for a raid with his knights right now, uh, honestly. He did, okay, there he is, one. Looks like he was able to pick off a villager. But look at this, nine villagers have been picked off um, by, by B, but he's still behind by a significant amount, you can see there. And you'll see these income numbers uh, really change. Now, as soon as he gets his Grand Fulani Corral, it increases the food per minute for these. So they'll give to, uh, additional 20 food per minute. So that's going to be a lot more food. You'll see this kind of adjust here in the next minute. And there we go. He's in the next age. We've really seen this landmark uh, come to life here in uh, this season. Uh, really, it's, it's been nothing but Ferimba up till now. But we're really seeing a lot more corral gameplay uh, these days. Those knights just really completely uncontested. I mean, what can he do versus these? He has... No Donzo. These are all Javelins. So he has to keep running. He's going to have to retreat his villagers now. Um, this is not good. Is he training some... Okay, some hardened Donzo. So he's upgrading his Donzo. Doesn't have a ton of military production. You see, he actually has a lot of resources in the bank, but is unable to back this up at the moment. But BC taking his time. He's collecting the relics. Uh, currently, you can see he's got his fourth relic. He might be able to get all five relics if he gets this one, which is just going to be a massive amount of passive gold income for BC Cutie. She really showing us today why he is the Twitch chat expert. Okay, so we've got a wall down to the south side. You've got to, you can't help but think about these gold expansions. So like this is gold he's going to want to secure. Uh, probably this gold here in the near future. He's got this for now. But uh, those, as we get to this medium late stages of the game, those will be important aspects for B. Okay, and we do see BC coming around. About to hit a big raid. Does he see that it's there? Not for sure. Uh, B can see him though, so he's got the line of sight on it because he did have this tower. Okay, so that saves his villagers from what could have been a really nasty raid there for a second. Okay, so BC's kind of on the hunt. Uh, it looks like he only got three relics. One of them was, I, I thought I saw he had two, but I might have misread the UI. So there's, there's two relics up for grab for now. Knight's looking to do a raid. He's going to be going after that tower and, uh, He's kind of trying to, probably trying to see if that army will come out to play, then he'll run away. Okay, he's going to stick it out and kill that tower, so that'll knock down some of that line of sight. Um, we'll see if B actually repairs that. Meanwhile, attack on the opposite side. B decided to go for a fast uh, Imperial. So you see him dropping that keep at the front. That's his... Wait, hold on. I, I I jumped the gun. That's just a keep. I thought it was... I thought it was the fortress. I was at the, the, the fortress the, the hunt. Uh, the, the age four landmark, but uh, I got a little crazy. Okay, archers though, gonna get a lot of damage. You see a lot of villagers dying. Javelin getting flanked by the knights. This is a, a tough battle for B. He's losing uh, a fair number of villagers in this fight as well. Look at the villager count. He might have gotten the keep up, but at what cost? He might win this battle, but will. Uh, looking at the long run, his economy is in a tough spot. Really in a tough spot. Okay, he's gonna clean up the rest of these troops here. Uh, but Horseman did get through, going to get some more raids, and uh, B's just kind of bleeding some villagers. At least he's got this passive food income and uh, like some passive gold income because of the pit mines. But uh, yeah, that was uh, probably an, a, a net win for Beastie just because of the fact of uh, the number of villagers he was able to pick off during that fight. He can replenish his army, and he's, he's walled up. 
He's on 2TC. He's made his farm transition with the Ock and Chapel. Look at that. He's just spamming down military production buildings. Uh, B's about to be in some trouble here. And uh, he did get all five relics. I think there's one more being traveling back right now. Oh, no. Uh, did he get one? It says it says that B has one. I don't know where. Oh, okay. He did get one. So, okay. There you have it. He got four relics. That's still pretty damn good for the HRE. Okay. We see a defensive keep being dropped down by B Security. Of course, that's a defensive HRE keep, so he can emergency repair that bad boy. That's going to be standing for a long time, unless he can get in here and stop it. But he's pulling more villagers. It's going to take him some time to get that wall. I don't think he's going to be able to stop that keep in time. So unfortunately, uh, B's army is going to have to turn around. He's going to pick off a villager, and yeah, he's going to, going to make a run for it. So uh, BC's been able to defend as he's starting to repop his army. Uh, and you do see the, the army count, of course, is in, in B's favor right now, but BC's playing this long game, right? That's what he's going for right now. Pit mine being dropped down. He does see that there's some villagers kind of out here exposed, so we'll see if some horsemen perhaps go for a raid, and that's exactly what it looks like BC's going to be doing. I was going to follow those across the field as they go on their raiding journey. Okay, still uh, looking at the villager spread right now. BC Cutie in a very nice position. B is picking up the poison arrows uh, for his troops. It looks like he does have a fair number of archers now in his unit composition, uh, not just javelins anymore. Uh, and he's also adding in some sofa as his economy is kind of getting online. There's his horsemen. I thought they might go for a raid. Looks like they're going to be going after that Imam. He should see this and react, though. You do see him trying to build his own wall up here to the north. A horseman going for a raid. And this is what's going to happen. We're just going to have like a horseman here, a horseman there. BC's going to raid. He's going to turtle up. And I, we'll probably see him make a transition to Imperial here at some point. But B going to be going for another big push. Without Siege, uh, taking out these keeps going to be really hard. Not to mention, these are keeps with relics in them now. So look at the range on these things. You know, it, 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 they're just, they're crazy. They're crazy strong. And he's got mangonels to deal with any archers. So B is going to need to get some siege online. So he does have a fair amount of gold. He could go for some siege if he wanted to. But uh, as of right now, he can't really push in there. Meanwhile, a horseman got a raid while he was distracted with his army. We see at least three villagers died there. We're going to see another one maybe go down here. Yeah, looks like that one's going to escape. Okay, so... What is B's in game here? He is controlling a lot of the gold on the map, but the HRE, they've got their relic income. He's got, look at the gold income he has, and does he have any villagers gathering gold other than, I guess he has like eight of them here? But that'll run out eventually, right? Eventually, actually, like right now. So, what gold is he gonna expand to? He basically have this one. This one kind of walled off right now. Down to the south, he's trying to drop a keeps. So that's it. He right now he knows he's got to secure some gold. Is B gonna be able to scout and stop it? We see Sofa kind of moving the direction, but it doesn't look like they're really on the path towards that gold. If he could see this, this could be a massive turning point for B. Because if he could kill these villagers, what that's nine villagers and deny the gold expansion, that could give him at least a little bit of advantage. But meanwhile, he's dealing with raids back at home. He's got Lance Connecta uh, raiding his gold villager, so he's not going to be able to deny this. That keep's going to go up, and uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to say too soon. There is a chance if he just ran there right now. He's checking, which, of course, is what you would want to do is just keep an eye on these large gold veins. But, yeah, he doesn't see it. He doesn't know it's there. So... Unfortunate. Uh, there was a raid back at home. He lost more villagers. And meanwhile, is the distraction that BC Cutie needed. Uh, you can see his army count still pretty low. That was just a distraction, so he could get this done over here, which has uh, been achieved. And uh, now he's got that keep up. A lot of sofa, a huge Malian army. Will they go for a raid maybe on the wood lines? We'll have to see. Uh, but there we go. We've got more palisade walls being dropped down for B. Double, more than double the villager count. So that's uh, that's pretty nuts. Looking at the population, you can really see the difference here. Uh, BC just been booming up. A big boy boom. And there he goes. Mangonel is going to be laying down some fire. He doesn't have any spring gold, so he really can't take this fight because those Mangonels are just going to deal too much damage. He needs siege not only to kill the Mangonels, but he's going to need a lot of siege to kill these keeps. So this just, again, isn't something you really pressure. I'm surprised he wasn't a little bit more aggressive scouting and denying uh, this gold down here. He could stick this, but he's going to lose a lot of uh, army to this keep. 
Um, he does not have emergency repairs available out here is the is the only thing good But yeah, you can see he's not just gonna stand there and take all that damage um, But yeah, we, we're gonna have a spring gold emplacement coming up. He's got secure uh, 8k gold there. He's got 4k gold there uh, He's in a pretty good spot here Okay, and uh, you know, I think this is gonna keep going on for a little bit longer here. We've got B just it seems to have failed to do anything with his his superior army number uh, just hasn't been enough because uh, Beastie built up his base so defensive in the first place. He was able to pretty much deny almost any raids. Um, and B had a good little run down there to get that gold expansion. We do see the poison arrows, but he can't even attack this without siege. We do look, he's going for the military academy to get um, some faster training. But uh, yeah, as of right now, kind of looking in a tough spot. Is he going to start trading? And that's what we do see. Now, this can. This can can impact the game a little bit here, right? Um, he's setting up trade quite early too. He doesn't need it right now, but Malian trade, of course, is going to be boosted by the taxation aura from these towers, these outposts. So, oh man, he's got a lot of CG starting to look like he's going for attack or something. He could just go for a quick complete surround on this, but uh, that's going to be a hard thing to push into without some sprinkles of his own, which I'm not seeing. Uh, BCQD is pop max. It doesn't look like. B is yet, and we've got a mid-map Elsbach Palace. Not something you see every day uh, here in the later stages, but he's already got plenty of villagers. He decided to go for nice keep here in the middle, and he's going to secure some more gold along with that. But anyways, that trade is going to be uh, helping B out there with uh, some of his gold income, and we see age four is reached for Beastie Cutie. We'll see if uh, B decides to take this fight mid-map. Doesn't look like he's going to. Don't blame him. He's got to deal with that siege somehow. I would be quite surprised if B is able to uh, somehow best BCQD from the position he's in right now. It looks like BC was or B was trying to do some kind of cheeky raid down the bottom. He's not going to get through. Looks like the knights and the man arms will clean up what's left left of that army, and that leaves B or BC just to focus on this main attack. You see him setting up his infrastructure. He's even bringing his relics to the front because of the fact that they will boost these buildings depending on where he puts the relic. I think we'll see it uh, here in the landmark. There it is. So let's look at the line of sight he has first of all. So you can see like half the map out to here. Uh, his army might be helping with that. The tower, I guess. But uh, okay, it's, it's about go time here. He's got still veteran spearmen. He hasn't upgraded these yet, but they're gonna be coming in soon. Gonna be coming in soon. BC uh, starting to really stack up some resources. The gold is what he's been spending, so he's trying to get some more gold in the bank, but he's got that kind of on lock right now, as you can see here. B also saying like, you know, maybe B sent up for the late game. I mean, well, he's got one, two, three, four, five markets. Still plenty of gold out on the map. <laughs> now I missed this, guys. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad. I was like, how did those archers get in? What? B has built a siege tower. A siege tower. Was that on purpose or uh, there's two of them. So it was definitely on purpose. B's out here making the siege towers guys. You heard it first. Season 5 3DB siege towers versus beastie cutie. What? Ha I, we've seen it all now. Oh my gosh. I have not seen a siege tower in real competitive play in a very 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 long time or maybe ever. So uh, Meanwhile, there's a big fight as we're we're busy staring at the beautiful siege towers. BC has just smacked all his infantry in their middle. It's forced B to bring his army back. But now he's going to be chasing down this HRE army. Quite speedy, of course. There's villagers everywhere. He did add in another town center. But uh, ooh, his, his trade is going to take a bit of a hit there as we see those spearmen just ran all the way to the back. Uh, he might be able to mop up the rest of this army though, just looking at their position they're in. The, I mean, losing three or four traders isn't going to be a huge loss for him. We need to see how he micros this fight. Uh, we see the Griot Barra being dropped down right now. So going up to the fourth age, and B will get this around. He'll be able to take a good engagement here. See those poison arrows coming in, and it should mop up the rest of this. So Rams going the other way. Siege Towers, of course. Uh, <laughs> defending. Now, if you don't know what a siege tower does, because maybe you've never seen one before, uh, quite possibly, it allows you to garrison eight troops in here, and then you can go up and you can unload directly onto the stone wall. So he was using it to sneak over these walls, and he was trying to do a little sneak attack on the back line, is what he was doing. So, uh, 
It's mostly a meme unit though. It's so bad. People usually make it to BM uh, to flame players at like the end of the game once they've won or something. But there we go. B 3DB making a siege tower in 2023, season five. This day. I'm so glad I decided to cast the game just for that alone. Okay, we see the uh, B has reached the fourth age. He's been able to clean up these raids and villager wise, he did drop some additional talent centers. He also built all these markets. He's in a similar position villager wise. Um, and we look at these population, very similar. So this really puts B back in this game and it's gonna come down to these military engagements and how this late stage starts going. As we're here about 30 minutes, 30 minutes in, we see uh, BC throwing some, some rams in here. I think he's mostly just trying to keep his troops busy and away from his base because rams can be super difficult to deal with. And uh, we see more spearmen running by. He's going to catch up and kill those ultimately. But he's just trying to dish out a little bit of damage. B may need to consider building some stone walls quite possibly. Now, I want to discuss one thing here as he built this landmark as he went to the fourth age. We've got the Griot Burra, and you might not be familiar with this. There's three different festivals you can essentially uh, choose from. So you've got the food, military, and siege. For the food festival, that's going to give you additional food gather rate by plus 50% for 60 seconds. Not to mention, remember, he's got the Muvu operation going there. So that can be a nice little boon to his economy. Military festival, it's going to increase his production speed. And then you've got the siege festival, which is going to uh, increase the damage of rams, bombards, siege, etc. Right? So those are his options he's got there. And uh, he's probably going for a little bit of economy right now is what I would imagine. Okay, we got some villagers under attack there at the bottom. And uh, we do see Sofa continuing to clean those up. Archer, he's just, he's putting out fires though. And Beastie, this is his patented move, guys. With the HRE, he will just creep, 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 creep with barracks and stone towers and cannons and keeps. That's what's happening all the way across the map because these will have uh, access to emergency repairs if he's able to connect it to the network. And so trying to stop this as it's burrowing towards your base, very, very difficult. It takes a lot of siege, whether it's a trebuchet or a ram or cannons. And you're trying to do that while also having the, the pop space you need to keep your economy up, to uh, keep fighting this HRE army. This is about to get really tough for 3DB as those towers, you can see he's getting those stone upgrades immediately. We got a little bit of bombard of boost. Uh, Bombard abuse coming out here for BC Cutie. He raids off on the side. And I just feel like this is going to be the nail in the coffin as we see these creep up. It's just going to be so hard to deal with. Let's see how B reacts. He's trying to take out the Rams at the front. Of course, he's now he's taking uh, fire from the towers. We've got Mangonels dishing out the damage on that front line. And uh, we've also got a, a Bombard already working away on that keep. Little raids going on here and there off on the sides, of course. Uh, that B's trying to react to, but he's he's playing a reactionary. He's not on the, the attack. He's not on the offensive. He's not able to really. He has to put everything he's got into defending this. And as you can see, BC having no problem defending it because of these towers, giving him such strength. He can even move these relics up if he wants to make them even more powerful. And that keeps him going down. He does have a culverin, the best anti-siege unit in the game. So he's able to get some shots off on those mangonels. Let's see if he goes for the bombard next. He does get a shot there. He's going to take two shots to kill it. And his main arms get within range. He does kill the Bombard. But psh, look at the bank of Beast of Cutie. It ain't going to matter. Where's the siege towers now? Where are they? Uh, B fine did decide to make a stone wall. But uh, it might not be enough, unfortunately. Okay, so we see those rams. Uh, being picked off there in the back line, but Beastie has just gained himself some more ground. We're gonna see some more towers here and uh, This is gonna be uh, Just really hard for B to deal with and This is how I see Beastie play HRE in most games that I cast uh, He likes to play this very turtly Boomy as 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 much economic greed as you can get away with that's what he goes for he stayed there he went 2 TC into super aggressive uh, Malians early on, and he he secured his resources, getting those deer, getting this boar was super strong for him. And then later on, when he decided to secure this gold with that keep, and then just keeping the raids on B, 
so he can keep uh, everyone out of his base and has just let his economy take over. I mean, look at the resources he's bringing in right now. It's just crazy. Uh, you know, you can't you can't beat HRE farms like this. Doesn't even matter if you got the full Muvu and you've got the food festival going on. HRE has just such a great late game here. And uh, when you think about unit compositions as well, uh, you know, it's been primarily just infantry and siege here. Uh, for BCQD, other than those archers we saw in the earlier stages of the game, we see those Rams continuing to push in, and uh, it looks like this this may seal uh, B's fate. Uh, now hold on, B's okay. Is he still got plenty of gold? He's just trying to steal the gold from his opponent, but uh, he can spare the pop. So I think he might be kind of just sacking some of these villagers. Wait, oh, he, he killed it. I thought he deleted it for a second. Here comes these Rams. Okay, so it could be a landmark snipe opportunity to kill this, this. This and that. Okay, so we'll see if he gets there. Rams moving in. Army count B sitting there on nine units. It doesn't matter whether he used that military festival or not or not. He does not have enough to stop these Rams. You see the Rams doing a little bit of a jig there underneath the town center. But yeah, going to be uh, taking that down. You know, I I've played definitely more Malians than I played Atri. I don't know what would would have done different here, but with that, after about 30 minutes of a slog fest. We've got BCQD coming out ahead with the win with the Holy Roman Empire up against 3DB's Malians. I hope you guys enjoyed this Casa game. Again, I'm glad to get to have some time to uh, upload some YouTube content. So please let me know if you watched all the way through and if you'd like to see more or what you're interested in. And of course, I'm going to be anxiously waiting, hopefully some new um, information about potentially some new civilizations on the horizon for Age of Empires 4. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.